my name is Peter. I'm the owner of R&D Automotive in Little Rock, California. I was born and raised in Little Rock. My grandfather on my mother's side came here and started a chicken farm. And then he was part of the building and safety of the Antelope Valley. And he passed away before I was born. My grandparents on my dad's side, um, my grandma worked for Little Rock Creek Irrigation. And my grandfather was a uh, well driller. My grandfather started uh, a, a shop, uh, Reed's Repairing, in the early 70s, 71, 72. And that is where my business is still today. My father extended the, the buildings on the property through the years and created a body shop and a tire shop and um, another building that's been numerous things throughout the years. There's all kinds of memories of Little Rock that I think are absolutely wonderful from the Lions Club pancake breakfasts and the fish fry Fridays and stuff. Um, my mom and dad were both very active in the community. My mom did a lot of stuff with the Miss Little Rock pageants, Little Miss, Junior Miss, uh, helped set up some of the boundaries from Little Rock to Pear Blossom to uh, Sun Village, Lake LA, so on and so forth. Um, I can remember an Easter where my mom for the Lions Club was in charge of an Easter egg hunt. And it happened to snow Saturday night. So all the eggs and all the stuff that she had went and hid for the Easter egg hunt got buried in snow. And nobody showed up for the Easter egg hunt. And so it was just my sister and I I had to go dig through the snow and um, find all the stuff that she had. So that's that was one of the memories I have. The Grange Hall and the and the different functions and the different um, barn dances and parades, harvest parades. And my dad had old cars, and so he would run his old cars in the parade and and at eight, nine years old, I would get to sit in the front seat of a 1948 Buick convertible and drive down the street with uh, the Lions Club president in the back or the or one, Miss Little Rock is in the back of the car or whatever and run the parade route with him. The parade route most of the time consisted of either Pear Blossom Highway from 77th Street to 82nd Street 82nd Street down to T8, T8 over to the Grange Hall, or behind Farmer's Market, up 82nd Street, and then all the way down in T8 over. Or in later years, the parades ended at Everett Martin Park. Uh, Little Rock and Prairie Blossom did a lot of functions together. Um, duck races. Um, even going up to the Abbey, I can remember as a kid, going up to the Abbey and, and um, setting up for their festival. My sister and I running around selling raffle tickets for the whole entire festival. Um, duck races. I was one of the kids that got stuck in the horse trailer with the ducks, and you could come rent the duck, and I you'd pick out your duck out of the 50 ducks that were in the trailer, and I'd have to catch that duck and... So you could get your duck that you chose to rent. Even in later years, um, when I was 15, 16, 17 years old, there would be events, uh, duck race events or, or such. And, and my parents had snow cone, cotton candy, um, hot dog machines. And so my sister and I would, would go to the uh, event, whatever event it was, and we would make sell snow cones and cotton candy as a vendor. My sister and I both ended up with uh, ATCs right after Honda first came out with them. And um, eight, nine, ten years old, my sister and I would ride from the house to the shop by ourselves. And we would just ride through the desert. And it wasn't, we respected people, we respected people's property. I would say, 
for the most part because everybody knew each other and if we didn't we'd hear about it and uh you know it wasn't wasn't an issue now then now it's you try to do that now more than likely you're gonna have a helicopter land on your head i own a 65 nova and so it's a street car so i used to go almost every friday night we were we were out there at lacr playing with our cars and and running the drag strip and that kind of stuff. Actually, back then, it was a nice drag strip. Uh, I kind of feel like I lost out because by the time I got there, it was still a decent drag strip, but it had, it had weathered pretty good by then. The little dip down at the end of the track on the tower side was, was heck sometimes. <laughs> I can remember my grandfather made a pontoon boat from scratch, and he used to take it up to Little Rock Dam to test it to see if it would float and hold water and, you know, not sink. So that was his test area for the boat. To me, Little Rock is a small town. It's a farming community. I know it has morphed into something else of recent, um, but in my brain, I still like to think of it as a farming community in a local town you know, where, where people are involved and people are, are still friendly. In fact, I open, I open my shop up and I love it when some of the locals come in and they see each other and their neighbors and they haven't seen each other in months and they'll stand there and BS and whatever for hour, half an hour, whatever, and it's just like, go for it, guys. It's great. I love it. I loved it when some of the old timers were still alive and would come in and some of the stories that they would tell and and that kind of stuff, you know. So I think the biggest thing is is I'd like people to understand that Little Rock is a farming community. I know that they've unfortunately taken out most of the trees and have quit farming a lot of this area, which I think is sad because I think that this area still has the potential to be a productive farm community, both in the um, profitability of it, as well as the environment, the the soils, the the people here to work the farms, everything else. I think it's all still pliable. It's just not as profitable as someplace else. It's not like it used to be when Sataglias were here and, you know, they had 20 or 30 orchards of their own, let alone Tannarellis and the other other farmers out here. So, See, and as a kid, there again, Kenny Zink and the Zink Orchards. Um, I worked for Kenny, and I was the kid that went out on the trailer with the tractor. You know, Kenny would drive the tractor, and I'd go out there and I'd pick up all the lugs or buckets or peaches or whatever that you picked or apricots or plums or whatever. And I'd put it on the trailer. And then when we got back to the scale, then I would take it all off the trailer and scale it all so that, you know, he'd know how much to charge you for X amount of pounds of fruit or whatever. But my sister worked on the orchard next door. But I think most people misunderstand the fact that, um, this is a farming community. And I think that, especially in recent, the riffraff and the other narratives that have moved in are underestimating the fact that this is a farming town and it is a small town. I think I would go back to dirt sidewalks and get rid of the gutter system that they've imposed on us. I don't mind progress, but I think that that takes a lot away from the aesthetics of our little farming town. If we could go back and I could bring back a lot of the people that have since passed and so on and so forth, then I would say, I don't want anything to change. <laughs> but being the fact that that has already happened and has changed, um, there again, unfortunately, the the agriculture, the farming, um, you know, I'm, I, I like Tannarelli and I like the Boneses, the fact that they're still here, the Tannarellis are still here, some of the Youngs are still here. Um, but it just, you know, I would like to see this back to a farming town. Great handshake and a conversation with somebody to 
a fist fight behind the barn, you know, so there's there's not much in the middle that's going to surprise you, you know. As far as I'm concerned, Little Rock has the best of everything in the world.